Hello everybody and welcome to Harvest Time. Um, if you watched the last episode you would have seen that we basically packed all of our equipment uh, ready to go and um, I'm just in the Massey. I am pulling the header for our CR7. We are basically going to get a wheat harvest underway right across the road here. So, we are good to go, look a little bit wet right here at the entrance, but everything else is dry as anything. So this is our first combine, getting ready to go. So we're seeing we've hit a snag <laughs> on, on day one, the very first field here, I was trying to get the course bay to go, and um, actually there's something about this header that seems to stick to the ground. We are only moving a little bit and uh, then we get stuck. Right, well that's not a perfect start to our uh, harvest here. We're probably going to have to get a new header for this. Um, I'll see what options there are. Uh, we're going to have to swap that out fairly quickly. But we need to get this CR10 on the go uh, for the canola field or um, on the other side of the farm in the meantime. So the CR10 is going to move up to field 15, which is just across the road up the other end of the farm, uh, past the cows here. Um, it's canola on that field, so there's going to be no baling. Um, it was because we were going to be laying down straw swaths with the CR7 that I wanted to get that one started first. But obviously, if the um, if there's a problem with the header, I hope it's a problem with the header and not the combine itself. Um, but we'll um, we'll get this canola on on the way first, and um, then we'll see what we can do to get that. CS7 fixed. It should still be under warranty. We we basically haven't used it for harvest yet. Fold up the header, and uh, just gotta be a little bit careful as we swing in that we're not gonna take a chunk out of our uh, pickup truck. Oh, I need to unfold our green shoot, and then. <laughs> It's been a little while since we ran combines, obviously. It's basically been a year. Um, and then I did push the pickup a little bit there, but we're okay. Now we're underway. Now we're actually harvesting. And this header, on the other hand, seems to be behaving itself just fine. It proved itself last year as well. So we can get this one running and we can get the chaser bin up to begin with. And then we got a little bit of time to figure out what's going on with this other header. So, um, we had a quick phone call uh, down to the dealer. Um, there's a problem. Um, we're going to try another one. Unfortunately, it is a smaller header, um, but it should fit on this New Holland model as well. So, uh, we're going to give it a go. Um, the CR7 should have been able to, to pull this header, but there was something uh, about the angle of it or something like that that just didn't make it feasible. So, we're going to quickly rush down and um, pick up a new one. They've agreed to come in early and open up the shop for us, so that's something at least. And while the Massey is heading down to um, get a, get that header replaced, uh, we are going to be taking the auger out. Uh, it should take a while uh, before the CR10 fills since we're harvesting uh, canola and obviously with smaller grains like that. Uh, it takes a longer time to, to fill it, but at least if we have the Kinsey trailer out in the field, um, we are going to be minimizing any downtime because we can take about two tankfuls from the combine before we need to unload into a truck, and hopefully by then we should be up and running on both fields. But yeah, I guess this, this is quite... Um, quite typical maybe. You you have big expensive machinery, um, 
it sits around for a big part of the year, uh, not doing anything, and then you bring it out into action. And obviously, with with the CR7, it um, we we actually bought it after harvest uh, because we made a decent amount of money, and so now we wanted to press it into action, and it wasn't quite there yet. But um, I'm just going to bring down the um, Zarian here. Um, so that we are close to the combine and then we'll go and see what the deal is with this header well we almost made it but not quite uh, I, I really wanted to keep it moving but at the same time it is full um, it indicates that we are getting a good crop we're getting a really good crop uh, that's much less than halfway around on the headland for the first load and um, that's our Massey down at the vehicle shop. I'm sure they'll phone through as uh, soon as we know what the deal is. But for now, we're just gonna get this sorted out so we can keep the CR10 moving at least. That is a decent amount of canola coming in off this field, that's for sure. I uh, will need some of it uh, for feeding pigs and whatnot, but I'm pretty sure we can also sell some of it. Right, so here we are. Um, they were fast at the dealership in uh, swapping out. Um, the only thing they have in right now that they reckon will fit this CR7 uh, in the New Holland series is, is a smaller 5.5 meter um, header. But we're going to have to go with it. Um, we don't want to wait for days to uh, find out what is actually going on. Uh, we want to get this up to the field and see if this one at least is working. Otherwise, um, we might have to start looking into using a different brand altogether or something. So, second attempt uh, with our brand new combine. Uh, straight up, let's see if this works any better. Uh, I hope it will. Right. We seem to be moving, and we seem to be moving at a bit of a better speed here. I don't know, maybe um, maybe that other header was simply too big for it. I would have thought it would have managed, but nonetheless, um, we got a second combine moving, and I think that that's the most important bit here. And wheat is coming in at a rate of nuts, so we better start thinking about getting some trailers out to the field as well. And just as we get the CR7 underway and functioning, CR10 is actually waiting to get unloaded for the second time already. So we are moving full throttle already. So here we are, we can see the CR10 sitting down. We are, what are we at? Halfway around the headland, second load. Man, this, this field is yielding uh, really good, um, better than I thought it was going to be actually. Um, especially over on this side, because we actually managed to miss a strip of fertilizing over on this side. But um, still doesn't seem to be a problem here.
so I skipped forward a little bit and um, sort of allowed a little bit of opening up of the fields so we could um, get on with things and um, it's sort of now past noon um, I think we're on our third load of canola uh, for the truck that is not for the um, auger here um, we are just trying to see how much we can unload before cosplay starts moving off again here should be able to get a decent amount in the tank. Um, the CR7 over on the other field is, is running fairly steadily. We finished the headlines. Um, it's getting a little bit of issue sometimes getting hooked onto the fence on one side of the field. But apart from that, um, we're actually starting to make some headway. So if I just kind of pan out here, and as, as you can see, um, the big CR10 is, is making good way into the canola now. But we're also getting a lot of canola off this field. Whoops. <laughs> That's not supposed to happen. But it did. Um, yeah, so we're about half full on the auger wagon again here. But I think what we're going to do is we're going to head over to the farm. Uh, and I think we are actually good to start bailing strips over on the wheat field where the CR7 is working. Obviously, we will have to keep an eye on, on grain and things like that. But we can get it underway now. So here we are, we got our John Deere um, 8400R uh, with the Deutsch um, baler. We got twine loaded on board. I'm not sure exactly how long the twine's gonna last. We already got our pickup truck out in the field because um, we had to refuel both of the combines. Just gonna hop in here uh, because we're not gonna start bailing down this end of the field. Gonna have to go up a little bit. Let's see, no traffic. That's all good. Um, we don't want to start bailing the headlands right away, uh, so that we're gonna have bales lying around getting in the way of the combine. Instead, we're gonna start bailing the strips where the combine has already worked. And right now, that's up the other end of the field, so we better head up there. It's a bit of a race to see if we can make it in front of the CR7 here. I think we should be okay, but um, I think we might be looking at an unload soon. We've got one of our New Holland T7 sitting here. I don't think it's completely full yet. In fact, it might be nearly empty. If it's, yeah, it's completely empty. So we're not going to have a problem. That one can quickly dart over and um, pick up. As you can see, we've got quite a lot of lines here that isn't part of the headland. Those are the ones that we are going to get started on here with the baler to begin with. Um, then obviously we will need to start getting some of them loaded. I think we're close enough to the farm right now that um, we're okay just to run the auto stagger. There's not much point in um, trying to load them onto a truck for a lengthier transport. Um, I think we can manage just fine. but. Just as I get started on the bailing here, uh, that's the CR7 needing to get unloaded, so we better hop over and do that. And uh, we've just had one of the New Holland T7s with two trailers head down um, to the uh, unload, uh, to the silos at the farm. So this one is all fresh and ready to receive a pile of wheat. We are getting a pretty decent amount of wheat, but this is our only wheat field, so we might have to be a little bit careful about how much to sell, because we want to retain some for uh, mixing pig feed, and uh, also a little bit for feeding the chickens, but that's, that's not going to take an awful lot. So as I mentioned before, I wasn't 100% sure in the last episode what the units were for the twine. Um, from reading up a little bit about the mod, I'm pretty sure this is um, meters of twine, basically. Each bale is uh, turned, I think it's about between six and eight times. Um, so each bale should take, I guess, the double double of that. Is, is it one, one and a bit meters? I don't know exactly uh, how much it's going to translate to, but um, let's see, we had 8,000 for with 98% and we dropped our first bale. So um, we're going to be able to do a decent amount of bales without having to stop here at least. That 
doesn't seem like it's going to be a big problem for us. But we got plenty of bales to get created on this field. Obviously the, the main input of bales this year is going to be here on, on the wheat field. And we got two oat fields. Now the oat is, is the grain that we're going to be selling straight off, uh, no question about it. We, we don't use it for any kind of feed. Um, and we don't have horses, so oat is going to get sold. Um, some of the other grains are going to get sold, but we're going to keep back uh, a good amount to be able to mix food for the animals on the farm as well. So as I'm coming up to a turn here, we, we got the pickup truck sitting with the Thunder Creek um, refueler out here. Um, it's actually empty um, and, and we have a little bit of an issue because of the problems we have with the um, CR7 header and because we did buy the uh, class uh, Zerion uh, right before starting harvest, we actually don't have an awful lot of money. Under normal circumstances, I probably would have just taken it down to the fuel station and filled it up. But this time around, we're going to have to fill it up from um, the farm instead. I think, I mean, we have enough there to do that. But um, normally, I try to prefer to uh, also stay on top of uh, being able to fill things in the field. But we got the first bales dropping onto the ground, just as the coal's coming in at the CR10 once again has filled up with canola. We are probably going to crack on. I don't know how long it's going to take. It's probably going to take close to the rest of the day to complete these fields. Um, then we got another four fields to get through during late summer that are ready to harvest. I prefer to get them in while we still got some decent weather. So I think we're going to probably crack on through the night um, to try and get these fields in. While we still got decent weather, it's 28 degrees out uh, according to this, so it's 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 a warm summer, that's for sure. So here we are. Thunder Creek is completely empty, and obviously, I mean, CR7 will keep running for a little bit, but um, we get the warning from Cosplay, and that means we probably should start paying attention at least. I think it usually comes up when it's sort of below quarter full, um, so. We're going to head back to the farm and uh, we're going to get some more fuel into this thing. Um, if we're going to keep both combines running uh, all day and through the night, we are likely to have to refuel both of them uh, to keep them running. I am using the increased fuel consumption mod uh, from Realismus Modding. I, I just feel that uh, the so-called normal fuel consumption feels very... Um, low uh, compared to sort of the time dilation and everything on the game but uh, you know that's up to everybody what, what kind of play style they prefer but I feel that it adds a little bit of uh, more well I don't want to call it realism to the game but uh, it adds something to the game certainly that feels like the amount of fuel that you would use um, to work through a field is, is a little bit better portrayed Haha, so now remember why I wasn't filling the Thunder Creek. Um, it, it doesn't like to fill from from the refill point on the farm. Uh, I'm not quite sure why. Uh, I've got the help menu up just so if I can see if we could find the point. So we are going to be heading down to the fuel station. We're just not going to fill the Thunder Creek necessarily right to the top. We might not actually be able to afford it. <laughs> um, yeah. Uh, it's a bit of an unusual situation. Normally, I prefer to keep a little bit more cash res reserve, but on the other hand, we do have um, our class tractor on the farm helping out with the harvest, and um, we will be able to sell some milk tomorrow, probably. 
see how it goes. Um, but we better head down to the fuel station for now. And while the CR7 is <laughs> getting low on fuel, uh, it's getting full on green. So while we got our pickup heading down to the uh, shell station to get a bit more fuel for it, um, we're going to get the green unloaded and then I think we might just um, pause it here for a second. I would like to keep going, but on the other hand, we don't want to end up running out of fuel. Um, well, then again, a quarter of a tank should keep us going for a good couple of hours still. Um, so we'll see how we get on. I, I still haven't managed to run a machine completely dry of fuel. I know it's a very bad thing to do when you're working with diesel engines, so um, it's not really a situation we'd like to find ourselves in. But um, I hope the pickup truck will be able to make it back uh, with some fuel. So, we're at the fuel station and uh, we better start buying in some fuel here. Um, for the um, trailer, I gotta keep a little bit of an eye on um, on the money. It's running down really fast. I don't think we can afford maybe an entire tank. Well, mind you, we're halfway. We we'll spend about three thousand euros. But yeah. Let's see. It's gonna go. Oh, it's gonna get really, really tight. We do have a whole bunch of eggs we can sell as well if we find ourselves dramatically low. We managed to fill it for half of the money that we had left but um, we better get back up because the CR7 is desperately needing this fuel. So we're getting to the second unload on the CR7 and we just had a call that the, um, the pickup with the Thunder Creek fuel trailer is pretty close. So um, any minute now I think we're going to see the combine driver pull out to make a bit of a cut in and uh, the pickup driver has reached the field sitting down at the entrance. So um, yeah, there we go. That's the combine making space for an unload. So once we get in and get it unloaded, we'll get it refueled at the same time. Um, and in the meantime, uh, right after that, we, we've averted disaster, I think. We haven't run it out of fuel. But after that, um, we've got enough bales up the top of the field now that we can start um, using the Anderson Auto Stagger. To pull a few of those in as well now the only thing is with two trailers on the back we've got to move pretty far up in front here but that's okay we actually got a bit of a patch here that didn't quite develop um okay it's running in off over the side there but uh yeah <laughs> we are unloading and uh i'm gonna go over and talk to the driver tell him he needs to stop until we get unfueled here oh fueled, not unfueled. Right. We made it with the Thunder Creek. It's getting pretty murky, but there is fuel in the thing, so we better get some transferred to the combine so we can get on with things. Good, so that's a third of the tank uh, in the Thunder Creek uh, that goes into the CR7. Obviously the CR10 has, has a larger fuel tank, but we should have enough uh, to keep both of them running um, CR7 here has been running, well both of them have been running, but both have been uh, refueled a little bit once there wasn't enough to completely top up the CR7 the last time, but both are running um, pretty high on fuel uh, still, so we should be okay here. We'll get this um, cosplay back on track 
and then um, uh, we'll get out and start picking up the first bales of our second year harvest here. That is right after we unload the CR10 again. Um, we're getting a lot of canola out of this field. Um, before we wrap up today's episode, I will briefly show you how much we've taken in on each field. It won't be the. I, I think we'll cut the episode before we are completely done with these fields, because we, we're getting into evening, and uh, the episode's been going on for quite a bit. Um, but I will show you how much we've taken on the field at least. And then in the next episode, we can see how much the total yield was um, and how much we got in the silos at that point. I think we can get this unloaded, then we can actually take it over to the farm and uh, unload the truck, and then we can see how much canola are in the silos. And after that, we can then head out and start picking up the first bales, and I think um, that's us closing in on a wrap for this particular episode. Harvest is going to carry on. Um, some of it's going to go on through the night. I'll do that off screen because it doesn't make for fantastic footage when it's dark. But um, we'll be back and there will definitely still be more harvest going on on my household in the next episode. Even though we are running two combines, there's still a lot to do here. I'm finding that the mud on the field sometimes plays a little bit havoc. As you can see, these kind of containers are sort of lifting a bit. I don't know if I think that's them reacting to the mud and mud on the field, uh, but I'm not 100% sure. It just seems like an odd behavior. Um, once we're out on a flat ground, stable ground, they will behave fine again. Here we are, we're inside the silo area, now we just have to make sure we go what seems like ridiculously close to the silo up here in order to make this, and I just hope I have left enough spool. I might actually have done it a little bit too wide this time. Oh, yeah, I have just a smidge. Let's see if I can just push around, turn it back up, and then Let's see back in the mirror that, yeah, that should keep us clear on the silo on the other side. Let's see if we can get the first container unloaded up over the area here. Just a little bit further. There we go. We are here. So just taking a quick look at our silos here. We're currently bringing in wheat and canola. So as you can see on, on the wheat side, we are already up at 161,000 liters. Now we did have uh, a bit sitting in the silo on both of them, but we're sort of talking 20,000 tops. Um, canola is already up to 278,595 liters, and we are not done with that field yet. Um, so in the next episode, we will pop back and see how we're getting on. Um, this truck is going to head back out into the field and we're going to be picking up a um, bill loader. So it's not until about 5.30 in the evening until we are on first day of harvest before we're picking up the first bales. Um, I guess I'd hope we'd been able to move on that a little bit quicker because we're going to be getting a lot of bales uh, coming out of the wheat field and the two oat fields plus a barley field um, further down. We'll see how we get on, um, how many of them we can cope with, how many of them we're going to take out to the heating plant. We're definitely going to fill back up our shed completely um, to the top and um, then we'll take it from there. I mean we've made a, lot, a significant amount of good money last year on, on the bales so it's definitely worth doing and uh, better get started. 
So here's the first one getting lifted onto our auto stacker. There's going to be a lot more of those coming on um, throughout this season. But I think we've kind of covered um, the first day of harvest uh, is going to carry on, but um, light will start to fade. We are cracking on with the same jobs here, so I will carry on a bit off screen. And then in the next episode, um, we'll, we'll get back when daylight breaks again, see how far we got. I, I hope we will we'll definitely have finished these fields. I hope we'll have moved into the next set of fields so that we have squared away four fields ideally but maybe we'll only be on two maybe we'll still be going strong um, <laughs> even all the way through the night and into the next day we'll, we'll see how that carries on um, but with some bales getting stacked with our full sort of harvest cycle here on Iosholt coming into the second year seeing that we're getting some really good yield figures again um, that's it for this first harvest episode of year two. Thank you very much for watching from Overcourt Gaming. And uh, do pop back, follow the rest of the harvest, and I'll uh, see you again soon.